702 Hobart, Master Control. Hello, I'm Richard Feidler, and this is a special program to mark the 90th birthday of the ABC. Have you got a moment for some audio and some arrows? Absolutely, fire away with the arrows. Right now we're behind the scenes, inside the nerve centre of ABC Radio. This is Master Control. MCR. Oh, good morning. There are MCRs in each of the major cities operating 24 hours. This is Melbourne Master Control. Sydney from Melbourne. Go ahead, Melbourne. I've uh, got a line check for RN Life Matters, please, on Mono 10. Thanks very much, Melbourne. That's all good uh, for RN Life Matters on Mono 10. We'll pick that up at five past nine. Cheers. Thanks, Sydney. There's a vast amount of equipment in this room and a console that's kind of like a spaceship. I use control, Radio Master. And it's where all the switching and routing of audio happens. Yeah, news control, just try and track down a source for the Parliament House presser, please. Uh, Parley House, like Parley Doors? Yeah, that'd be great. And where sound quality is monitored and faults are fixed. Thank you. Oh, hi there. It's Mark from ABC Radio Melbourne Master Control. I'm just following up on an issue with a codec at King Island that we've got at the moment. Master Control keeps more than 50 ABC city and regional stations, four national networks, an international service, and numerous digital stations on air. Adelaide from Melbourne. Go ahead, Melbourne. Just letting you know our TARDIS guest has arrived at our end, so they should be right to go for your studio when you're ready. Thank you for confirming. Thanks, Adelaide. The ABC was born at 8pm on the 1st of July, 1932. This is the Australian Broadcasting Commission, relaying throughout Australia the opening night of the newly constituted Australian Broadcasting Commission. And what better time to celebrate and reflect on ABC Radio and the impact it's had on Australian life then and now and in all its variety with this special tuned in 90 years of ABC Radio. When the National Service began in 1932, we had 12 stations. This is the Australian Broadcasting Commission. There weren't many listeners, but we had a great deal of enthusiasm. Relaying to all Australian stations. Today, the number of ABC stations has grown to 70. National and No commercial. part of the continent is beyond the range of our medium wave and our short wave transmitters. You're with Christine Arnoux. It's showtime! Mid, mid, seong apa kapukuta, kapukubilngitamura. That means, hello and welcome. And that's from my mother's language, Kalau Kawau Ya, from the northwestern region of the Torres Strait. Big things are happening on the show tonight. We present now the first of an interesting new series of musical recitals. During the coming months, Yasha and Tosi Spivakovsky will present every third Sunday the complete series of Beethoven and Brahms sonatas for piano and violin. Tonight, we hear... This is Classic Drive with Vanessa Hughes on ABC Classic. There's a delicious Tchaikovsky waltz coming your way in about a minute or two. Bernstein is also nearby and he's going to get positively wild, but J.S. Bach is up first and here's how happy he's feeling about it being Wednesday. Jackson wide out and Shadow King finishing well. Paul Mark will win it. Paul Mark wins it all right. Paul Mark leading from Gain Carrington. Shadow King topical coming home well. But Paul Mark, Paul Mark wins from uh, topical. Obviously Shadow they're King. almost all set for the running of the 2000 Melbourne Cup. And what a field it is. You know, people have said it's a disappointing field, Roy. I think it's the best field ever assembled since 32. When you get them all lined up and you have a look at them, you know, pound for pound. When the ABC hit the airwaves in 1932, for the very first time, Australians were united by being able to gather around this oh-so-modern wireless to listen to sport, music and news, national and international. You must believe me when I tell you that I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility. Radio is in some ways perhaps a more miraculous invention even than television. Liz Jacker is Emeritus Professor at the University of Technology, Sydney. 
because I think the impact is that remote signals can come into the living room. As I would wish to do, without the help and support of the woman I love. So suddenly, from a society which is limited to, you know, the neighbourhood and the street and so on, the access to a wide world suddenly there in the living room is profound. Fast turns, runs in, body to Bradman. I think I would have to say that the ABC was particularly important to the cultural development of Australia. Not only the cultural development, but also in news and in sport. Ball well pitched, Bradman moves forward, drives. Common at cover tries to cut it off, but is beaten by the pace of the ball, and it races away for another four. It was a very unifying factor in a big country. Tim Bowden worked at the ABC for many years, from 1963. A former foreign correspondent, current affairs producer and documentary maker. It was the one constant thing that, that bound a national debate, if you like, together. And Australia is now building herself in a very sound position, assisted by a great knock by Bradman. Hello, I'm Sabra Lane and I host AM on ABC Radio. Providing up-to-date news has always been important for us, although the ABC had no independent news service of its own, up to and including the Second World War. It is our privilege tonight to introduce the Prime Minister, the Honourable John Curtin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister... Men and women of Australia, we are at war with Japan because our vital interests are imperiled and because the rights of free people in the whole Pacific are assailed. In 1947, the Australian Broadcasting Act was finally amended so that the ABC could establish its own news gathering service. And from then on, ABC newsrooms around the country were ready to spring into action to fill the hourly bulletins. <laughs> What happened? Nothing. Oh, well, thanks. By the 1960s, journalists at the ABC started thinking about different ways to convey the news. In 1967, a new current affairs program was launched. <laughs> This is the ABC's new morning program, AM. And every weekday morning from now on, we'll be taking a fresh look at the world, what it's talking about, what people in the news are doing. In the age before computers, pre-recorded packages and interviews were recorded on quarter-inch tape and edited for broadcast by cutting up the tape. One of the producers was Judy Bateman. We'd run the tape through and we were, we're very proud of ourselves because we can take ums and ahs and t's and d's out fairly easily with a razor blade and a, and a bit of sticky tape. And that was the way we used to edit in those days. And, and you didn't need to have a shaky hand in the morning because editing tapes to go on AM in the morning were not very good if it was after the night before. The pre-digital age threw up challenges in the field as well. A long-time foreign correspondent, Peter Cave, became a master of improvisation with a soldering iron, an essential part of his kit. If I was staying at a hotel for any period of time, uh, then I would pull the, uh, the wall uh, apart and solder a couple of wires onto the, uh, the connections or to the phone and leave them sort of hanging out the phone rang while you were doing this connection, it actually sent quite a, a jolt of electricity uh, through the phone line to make it ring and uh, that would be a bit, bit painful if you are trying to connect on at the time. Then there was the field recording device. From the 1950s through to the 1980s, the state-of-the-art portable tape recorder was a Nagra. Not so portable, actually. A marvel of Swiss engineering. It weighed about eight kilograms with batteries and you carried it over your shoulder. Colleagues from the time often grumble that the Nagra has kept more physiotherapists and back surgeons in business than any other piece of equipment outside the mining and construction industry. Hello and welcome to PM, I'm Mark Colvin. 
We begin tonight's coverage on PM. PM launched in 1969 to bookend with AM, the day's current affairs. And of course, on the hour, every hour since 1947, the news bulletin. This is ABC News. I'm John Logan. This is ABC News. I'm Peter Collin. This is the national news from the ABC, read by Barry Eaton. Good morning. Anita Savage with ABC News. ABC News with John Hall. Good morning. You're listening to ABC News. Good morning. I'm Bruce Mears. This is ABC News. Good morning. I'm John Greaves. Good morning. Deborah Rice with ABC News. This is ABC News. I'm Thomas Ariti. Good morning. Tony Matthews with ABC News. G'day. Naz Campanella with Triple J News. And as well as all those familiar voices bringing you the news, there's the equally familiar news theme. This is the original recording of the Majestic Fanfare made in London in 1943. It was first used as the ABC News theme ten years later. And it's been used ever since on radio over nearly 70 years. The Majestic Fanfare has been reorchestrated and re-recorded a couple of times. Then there are the cover versions. That's for Triple J, and there's the Dixieland version for ABC Jazz. And for this special anniversary program marking 90 years of ABC Radio, it's Virginia Trioli from ABC Local Radio with you now. I'm proudly one of so many presenters, past and present, who've spent time with you. Hello, everyone. This is Talbot Duck Madden speaking to you from Martin Place, Sydney. Good morning. Andrew Ollie on 2BL. Charlie King and Barry Nichols broadcasting live from the Alice Springs Swimming Centre. Two past nine on the Libby Sanders Show. Good morning, if you've just joined me. Morning, boot campers. How are you this morning? Uh, good to be hanging about and, uh, you know, delivering everything you need from a radio here on ABC Radio Sydney. I was very excited to read a piece this morning about our spare bedrooms. With Nadia Mitsopoulos on ABC Radio Perth and WA. Plenty of texts about rentals or moving here. Solicitor says, why don't you get the Premier on? Ask him why more social housing is not being built. Glad you asked, listener. He'll be on. If you've got questions for the Vice Chancellor of the University of Tasmania, I would love to hear from you this morning. One three hundred triple two nine three six. ABC Radio Hobart, ABC North Tas, Leon Compton, with you this morning. Can we in just a moment? Hey, after the news on ABC Brisbane and Gold Coast, uh, you're going to hear a little bit more about the Queenslanders that you could help today. I'm Kat Finney. It's nearly half past My one. name is Michaela Simpson. Good to be with you right across the Northern Territory this Tuesday evening. Last night, I officially launched this year's Territory Sounds Countdown, a celebration of all the amazing tracks. Hi-ho, everybody. Peter goes here with... The second hour of our evening show here on ABC Radio Adelaide, across South Australia, and into the Sylvia, the Sylvia, the, <laughs> the Silver City of Broken Hill. Speaking of which, we're going to get all the news from on the ABC Bay Radio Wars. Melbourne and ABC Victoria. You're with Lisa Leon. Cruise ships are back. Lorraine from Pasco Vale has called in. Hello. Hello. We went on a rock the boat cruise. In the days before television, never mind YouTube and TikTok, radio drama ruled the airwaves, including serials like The Lawsons and, most famously, Blue Hills, which ran for nearly 6,000 episodes from 1949 to 1976. I'm giving everyone a bit of a surprise, Anne. <laughs> I hardly knew you. What's happened? Well, it's a new dress. Oh, and... I know that. And, and a new hat, too. But it's more than that. It's the psychological effect. <laughs> I, I said Meg would mention that. Oh, why not, Mother? It's true. Of course it's true. I'm not denying it. You've developed a new personality to go along with the hat. That's what it is, Aunt Hero. I was only about ten at the time. And my mother 
used to listen to it faithfully. We had a wireless that used to run off a car battery. The words used to be at a mum, make sure that battery's charged so I can listen to the Blue Eels and Lawson's. Okay, mum. We arrived in Sydney on the 29th of September 1947. My mother couldn't work because she had my little sister. And I can honestly say that she learned English from following the story of Blue Hills. Essential listening for those in rural and regional Australia ever since 1945 has been the Country Hour. Hello everyone, this is Dick Stedden of the Country Hour with a program for the farm families of Australia. Today, an irrigation This is the New South Wales Country Hour with Michael Condon on ABC Radio New South Wales. Hello again and welcome to the program coming up in the next hour. The legacy of the floods and a north coast on farmers. Also, we look at the curious visit of a Tongan princess and how that might help address the worker shortage in Canada and also the power of a good drone to find wild pigs that are threatening the lambs. And at 12.48 Eastern Time, we take you to Tasmania to hear about the exhibits at the Launceston Show. These rural ingredients are blended for relax listening with the best of music from star pianist Dudley Stapleton, who now plays I Miss You So. During those years, the ABC has expanded a great deal, and much of this expansion has been in our regional services. I welcome the opening of this new station because of the additional facilities it gives to northern Tasmanians the establishment of this new station enables the Commission to carry out its policy of providing its listeners with a properly balanced program. Other regional stations are planned, but we still regard the opening of a new regional station as a really important event. Facilities at regional stations, however, weren't always as grand as the speeches that launched them. It was a bit of a setback to find that the 2NC studio was an airless little room above a billiard saloon in a back lane behind the Strand Theatre. Worse still, it could be reached only by a narrow twisting staircase that may have been adequate for a saloon storeroom, but was a little undignified as an entrance to the local branch of the National Broadcasting Service. I arrived in Horsham and was horrified to find that the so-called studio, which in the past had been used for emergency service only, consisted of a room in the post office complete with old-time microphone, two record turntables of the old gramophone type complete with crank handles, and a mechanical clock which had the unfortunate habit of losing or gaining time to the extent of five minutes every quarter hour. Whatever the facilities or conditions, ABC Local Radio has always been the place for emergency broadcasting. I have been asked by the Australian Broadcasting Commission to speak to the people of Australia of the recent bombing of Darwin by our enemy. Cyclone Tracy is expected to hit Darwin in the early hours of this morning. Our property is surrounded by fire. We can't get out. We're just trying to stay in our house. We're just about out of water. People are on the roofs of their house and the water is lapping into gutters about to continue to rise. They will be obviously a first priority for us. It's also a place just to chat and share. Good morning, Maka. This is Damesh from Melbourne. How are you? Good, thanks, Damesh. Uh, yes, I'm listening to your program since I arrived in Australia back in 2008. I'm really feeling like whenever I'm listening to your program on every Sunday, I'm really feeling I'm in Australia and I'm really enjoying the real Australia. <laughs> Good on you, Damesh. It's nice to talk. Love you, Maka. Ian McNamara has been presenting Australia All Over on ABC Local Radio since 1985. Also on Local Radio... Tony Delroy's Nightlife. Tony Delroy presented the late night talk show from 1990 to 2016. A highlight every night being the 25 question quiz. Maureen from Bendigo, I haven't heard from you for a minute. You weren't supposed to know it was me. <laughs> you, 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 you have a recognisable voice. Yes, I know. It's a bit. Was... It's a bit like me getting into a taxi at late at night. I just don't speak. I just go. Okay. <clears throat> uh... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Fancy asking me a sports question. Mm, well.
G'day, this is Philip Adams from Late Night Live on Radio National. Back in 1932, the ABC started with one radio network. After the Second World War, in 1947, another network was established, Radio 2. It was designated as the place for more serious conversation and by the 1970s, this meant taking women more seriously. This is the Coming Out Ready or Not show. And since it is International Women's Day and International Women's Year, we thought it would be a good idea to find out how the experts think women could come out in 1975. And so the following advice comes to you from Ida Buttrose, who was editor of Clio and is now editor of the Women's Weekly. Well, I think it's terribly hard being a woman in 1975 because everybody's so busy telling us what and how we should think, do, act, etc. A woman is an individual. Now, that's what we've tried to get over with Cleo. We've tried to show women that there are so many possibilities with one's life. And 44 years later, Ida Buttrose became chair of the ABC. In 1985, Radio 2 was renamed Radio National. Lots of programmes still heard on RN date back to the days of Radio 2, like background briefing. Brace yourself. In background briefing today, we go to the abattoirs to find out what happens in the journey from lamb to lamb chop. Meat processing revolves around a moving chain which carries the carcasses on a large hook. There's lots of noise, there's lots of smell. Hello, I'm Liz Jackson. In today's program... Religious broadcasting has been a strong part of ABC Radio since the beginning. When Caroline Jones turned from current affairs to religion in 1987, she took a new approach with the search for meaning on RN. I think of the search for meaning as an eight-year-long telling of the stories of my countrymen and women about where they'd come from, how they'd faced their hard times and kept their faith in life. And this telling of real lived experience revealed a rich subterranean vein of consciousness, I think, seldom before discussed in public in a pragmatic, increasingly secular society. Storytelling seems to be crucial to the human condition, doesn't it? You know, the Bible and and, and so many other spiritual, great spiritual texts are told in stories. So the story seems to be the most powerful way we've found to make sense of our existence, and that's really what we were doing in the search for meaning. Also on RN, Indigenous voices were emerging much more strongly from the 1990s. Hello, welcome to Away, Radio National's new Indigenous arts program. Here in Central Australia, there are many different languages spoken, but the people of Alice Springs are Aranta, and away in Aranta means listen up. You're listening to Away, Indigenous Art and Culture on RN. Author, academic and activist Tony Birch often refers to himself as a Fitzroy Black. That's Black, B-L-A-K, in reference to artist Destiny Deacon's story. Other arts and culture programs have always figured on Radio National, like the music show, presented since 1995 by Andrew Ford and featuring interviews with artists across all music genres. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. It's Not Unusual was a tremendous song and very unlike the other sort of stuff that was getting into the top 20 in the mid-60s. Yes. It was a unique sound at that time because most, most of the records coming out were like three guitars and drums. Very little brass was being used. It was so different that the BBC didn't want to play it at first. Really? Yeah, so the pirate ship, you know, pirate radio off the coast of England, they, they started playing it and they made it a hit and then the BBC had to play it. It's not unusual. You never know who you're going to hear on the music show. The Health Report has been on RN since 1985, presented by the good Dr Norman Swan. 
He's also made forays into the science show with reports not necessarily in praise of science or scientists. This is a programme about the conduct of science and how misconduct can escape detection, be covered up or just ignored. It's also about the way unscientific research can be accepted by laypeople. We're talking about a mythology and we're talking about people worshipping someone who has been constructed by the media as a hero figure. It's accepting words that a scientist says because this person is seen as being good and above criticism. Norman Swan won the Gold Walkley in 1988 for exposing scientific fraud by the gynaecologist William McBride. The Science Show has been presented by Robin Williams since 1975 when Radio National was called Radio 2. Well, that's the science show for this week. But just a word about next week's science show. We'll have a special on birth control methods of the future, contraceptive vaccines, implants, pills for men and so on. And if you have a question on contraceptives of the future, do write to us at the following address. The Science Show, Box 487, Sydney 2001. Repeating, The Science Show, Box 487, Sydney 2001. I'm Robin Williams. Bye. <laughs> In 1975, the ABC had different post office box numbers around the country. This was standardised in 1983 into GPO Box 9994 in your capital city. It is said that ABC general manager and cricket tragic Talbot Duck Manton chose the digits 9994 to honour Donald Bradman's test batting average of 99.94. The story may be apocryphal, but if it is, it's a great numeric coincidence. Also, in 1983, the Australian Broadcasting Commission became the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. This is a special program to mark the 90th birthday of the ABC. Going back to 1975, a youth explosion was about to happen at what was still the Australian Broadcasting Commission. Hi, I'm Richard Kingsmill from Triple J. This song by the Australian band Skyhooks was the first record played on 2 J because it was banned on commercial stations. Wow, we're away. On behalf of uh, all the team here at Double J, good morning and welcome. Double J became Triple J when it moved to the FM band. At the end of the 80s, the Sydney station started its expansion to a national network. Its primary focus has always been music, but it's more than that too, taking a different approach to things like current affairs with hack, as well as sport and science. The way I got into the Jays was that back in 1981, the space shuttle was launching for the first time and I had applied to become an astronaut but it had been knocked back. And so I uh, heard that Double J, as it was, was doing something for the year of transport. I rang up, got on a Tony Barrel. G'day, Triple J. Hello, is that Mr Barrel? Yeah. Hi, look, I believe you're doing some program on the space shuttle. Well, we are, told him my interest and in how I was fascinated by this fine machine. And he said, why don't you come in for the launch? And so we were there for the actual launch of the space shuttle and it didn't go off because they had a problem with the fuel cell and everybody's looking at each other in the studio saying, what's a fuel cell? Luckily, I knew what a fuel cell was. It is this, it does that. It's got these advantages and disadvantages. And then we came back a week later. We did the actual launch. It took off. And then Tony Barrel said, well, we need you for a show called Great Moments in Science. And so then it took off from there and just kept on going and never stopped. And thus, Dr. Karl Kruzelnitsky was unleashed on the world. So were these two. It's taken by Oz, knocked down by Brasher, knocked it forward. That's right, Oz. And he's furious with himself, a personal failure between you and Pigskin there, Roy. Yes, I agree, Oz, and I don't think the up and under was on on that occasion. I think they had the numbers out on the right if they wanted them, but uh, they didn't see it that way, and I put that mistake... Another controversial song, this time by the American rap group N.W.A., caused some trouble at Triple J. 
In 1990, it was the only radio station in the world playing their song, F the Police. But political pressure led ABC management to ban the song. Triple J staff went on strike and, as a protest, left another NWA song on continuous play. NWA rapper Ice Cube was following what was happening. This was a big deal. Uh, They had let us know that a a station... um, got in trouble for playing F the police and, you know, people got suspended and and they ended up playing Express Yourself like the whole (laughs) afternoon. Mm. And it was just crazy. You know, that's like we felt good that people were standing up. You know, I mean, it's like this music makes you stand up uh, no matter who you are, where you are. Uh, It's all freedom of expression. You know, so Express Yourself was the perfect song to play after that situation. There are the live events too, like the Big Day Out. For 20 years, Triple J was there to capture the performances. I'm just wondering what band you've come here to see today. Nirvana. Definitely Nirvana. Um, Nirvana. Nirvana, of course. Definitely Nirvana. 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 The violent fans. Yeah. You got a Nirvana t-shirt on, though? Yeah, I know. Triple J has put its own stamp on the contemporary music scene with events like the J Awards, the One Night Stand and the station's biggest annual celebration, the Hottest 100. Though in 2018, it became about more than just the music. Here is number two with Triple J's Hottest 100. No way! It's one of the biggest days on the Australian music scene where the country votes on the song of the year. Hottest 100 countdown barbecues and parties are a national tradition for many on Australia Day, but that is set to change. We'll count down the Hottest 100 on Saturday the 27th of January. Next year, the countdown will be held a day later. Triple J's decision was made after the majority of its listeners supported the move in a survey. The poll was prompted by the growing debate on whether Australia Day should be held on the anniversary of the first fleet's arrival. To have it on a day that essentially celebrates genocide is disgusting and it's embarrassing and for me, as an Aboriginal person, it's it's hurtful. Public reaction to the move has been swift. Not too keen about it. I like to keep things the way they are, I think. Very happy with it. The day change doesn't affect me because I can enjoy it on either day and it does affect certain Indigenous cultures, so let them have the change. Hello, I'm Ed LeBrock with you now from ABC Classic. While Triple J has its hottest 100, since 2002, ABC Classic has had its own countdown for you to vote in. 100 to 1. The Classic 100. The music you can't live without. On ABC Classic. Knock, knock. Who's there? Philip Glass. Knock, knock. Who's there? Philip Glass. Oh, here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Philip Glass. Okay. <laughs> Carl, Carl Philip Emmanuel, Emmanuel Bach. Yes. He was kind of like an 18th century kind of Andre Rieu. What? In that he rode a horse and cart to the supermarket. But I, I tell you, big names. Many, still to come. Many have fallen, but <laughs> many true. are still to come. Handel almost more English, really, than he was German, wasn't he? And, you know, if his mum hadn't taken it upon herself to sneak an entire clavichord up into the attic where he lived as a kid. How did she get it up the stairs? Tim's home. Tim's home. He was on the bus from Santa Barbara to LA Airport. LA Airport, that's right. And he's just landed in Sydney and he's been listening on the plane's Wi-Fi. An absolute delight to have Elena Katschernan with us right now. Elena, thank you. Well, thank you and thank you, the voters. I'm totally speechless, actually. Well, I'm talking, but I'm still speechless. (laughs) How good are Australian composers? Mate, how good are Australian composers? An ABC network dedicated to classical music, launched in 1976. ABC FM. Eastern time is now 11 o'clock, Central time half past 10. 
And ABC FM Stereo Radio is broadcasting in Adelaide on 92.1 MHz, in Canberra on 101.9, in Melbourne 105.7, and in Sydney 92.9 MHz. Here's some music from the opera fantasy Haryanosh. Classical music on ABC Radio goes back much further than 1976, though. Live concert broadcasts were a feature from the start, but they were almost never recorded for posterity. The earliest recording comes from 1944. It's the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Eugene Ormandy. A concert in the Sydney Town Hall for troops and to boost the war effort. The audio technician was John Warren. We didn't record a lot from live concerts. Most of these went direct on the air. I was up here in our Forbes Street studios. The town hall, of course, is about a mile away. And we were connected with Landline. And the program came over the Landline up to us. We put it through our amplifiers here and put it onto the discs. We could get telephone between here and Town Hall and they were able to advise us when the ends of the movements were coming up so that we would have the right time to cross over the discs. Well into the 1950s and 60s, it was still rare for ABC orchestral concerts to be recorded. Except by people at home taping off the radio. This is one of those bootlegs, the only recording in existence of this performance by the great pianist Alfred Brendel. And we return to the Melbourne Town Hall for the second part of our concert. As well as orchestral concerts, sing-alongs on air date back a long way on ABC Radio. And in 2020, ABC Classic reinvented the sing-along with its classic choir. When so many people around the country had been in lockdown, listeners were invited to learn a specially composed song and submit a video of themselves singing it. The mass contributions were compiled into a whole. Deborah Cheatham wrote the song for that first classic choir. I just started singing, you know, what is it about this year? And I thought, what will people be wanting? They'll want to be with their loved ones on Christmas. You know, that, that feeling that if we can only be together, at least it, one time in the year, it would be Christmas. You're listening to Tuned In, 90 years of ABC Radio, and this is Talia Olatia from Radio Australia. As well as a growing number of domestic stations and networks over the years, the ABC established an overseas service in 1939, just after the outbreak of the Second World War, transmitting on shortwave radio from northern Australia into the Pacific. This was... Australia calling. Australia calling the world. Station VLQ2. V for victory, L for liberty, Q for quality. VLQ2, Australia calling. I have the honour to introduce the Prime Minister of Australia, the Right Honourable R.G. Menzies. No country today can afford to ignore either the fact or the consequences of war. And most countries have a natural interest in discovering why other countries are fighting and what they are fighting for and what their honest ideas are about what they hope to achieve. Australia Calling was the wartime precursor to what in 1950 became Radio Australia.
Good evening, everyone. This is Radio Australia, the overseas service of the ABC. Radio Australia's mission was to present Australia to the world, especially the Asia-Pacific, and to provide news of the region through an Australian perspective. During the Vietnam War, for example, ABC foreign correspondents filed by voice circuit for Radio Australia as well as for domestic programs. During street fighting in so long. From Saigon, this is Brian Peck reporting for Radio Australia. I thought we had Radio Australia on the line then. Yes, I'm sure, pretty sure Radio Australia is standing by. Yes, our yes. is standing by. We're recording OK. Good. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Sydney is clear. Anything from Melbourne? Uh, no, no messages from Melbourne. OK, well, that's all. Goodbye. But thanks, cheers and out from Melbourne. Thanks, Brian. Out from Sydney. Good day. Bye-bye. Radio Australia has broadcast in a range of languages as well as English, including Vietnamese, Thai, Japanese and Bahasa Indonesia, engaging with speakers of these languages in different ways. In the Japanese section, we broadcast a fair amount of music. Most of our listeners are shortwave enthusiasts, people who like to bring the world right into their homes through radio. So, there are Australian folk song, Taimi Kangaroo Down. Yeah, maybe not these days. Drama series were designed as English lessons. I'm going to find Jada and you can't stop me. We do have a series about two Australians in Thailand and their adventures. How do we find Jada? But you wouldn't say it was uh, Blue Hills. Well, first of all, we must find Mr. One, I suppose. But we have many listeners in Thailand. And to do that, I suggest we advertise. Advertise? Yes. One long-lasting Radio Australia program served a different mission. Every Friday afternoon, work stopped at the South Pole for one reason. Hello, Antarctica. Calling the men of Antarctica around the Australian Antarctic research bases of Mawson, Wilkes, Macquarie Island, the Amory Ice Shelf, and such offshoots as Repstat and the various men on Travis. This is your girl Friday, Norma Ferris, bringing you Calling Antarctica. Calling Antarctica ran from 1948 through to the arrival of satellite technology in the mid-1980s. Nowadays, Radio Australia focuses on the Pacific region, broadcasting in English and Tokpisan via 24-hour FM stations, live satellite and online. Hello, Algetan. Welcome. Long Disla Triple 10 Minute Blue News. Now, current affairs. Long ABC Radio Australia One Talk Program. Me, Caroline Terriman. Long Program, Australian Foreign Minister. This is Pacific Beat on ABC Radio Australia. Hello, I'm Evan Wasu. Coming up, defence ministers from Australia and China meet at International Security Summit. But for Fiji, security means dealing with the world. Hi, it's Glenn Bartholomew from News Radio with you now. Something new back in 1946 was to broadcast the proceedings of Parliament. Actually, from that time, it was a legislative requirement of the ABC. This is the Australian Broadcasting Commission bringing to you, direct from the floor of the National Parliament, the proceedings of the House of Representatives. This is the first time in history of this Commonwealth that the regular day-by-day proceedings of Parliament have been on the air. Mr Speaker, no one is an unemployed because of the government's responses. People are unemployed in this country, Mr Speaker. People have been reduced to zero hours, which is the same thing, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister will pause. The member for Lawler will leave under standing order 94A, and I warn all those others... Mr Speaker, I give notice to the the next sitting. I will move that I have leave to bring in a bill... Since 1988, Parliament has been broadcast by the ABC on a dedicated transmitter, but that left empty airtime when Parliament was not sitting. So why not use that available time for a new type of news coverage? News Radio. In 1994, the managing director of the ABC launched this rolling 24-hour news network. 
This is ABC News Radio and I'm David Hill. The top story of the moment is the start of the ABC's radio's continuous news service, News Radio, on the Parliamentary and News Network. Listeners can now hear more news more often on the service that begins today. And now for the remainder of the latest news... Here's Russell Powell. And good morning. Thank you, David. The headlines in the news this morning. Bob Hawke keeps up his attacks on Paul Keating. Japan's environment These days, you can get your news, current affairs and special interest programs in different ways, not just on the radio. This is an ABC podcast. Welcome to Control Z, where we take a dive into internet culture and all things tech. Today, we're... Hello, it's viral. us. Yes, hello, I'm Ange Lovewipe-Yeah. And I'm Stephen Smiley, and today on The Signal, we're talking I'm Matt about... Bevan, and this is Russia, if you're listening. Hello, this is CoronaCast, a show all about the coronavirus. Hello and welcome to This Week. I'm Linda Mottram. Cost of this living... is ABC News Daily. I'm Sam Hawley. And Richard Feidler with you again, and I'm proud to say that I co-host the ABC's most successful podcast, Conversations. Another one of the earliest and most successful ABC podcasts is Short and Curly, an ethics program for kids. Pranks are a delicate art form, something we humans have done to others since, well, time began. How about I share with you some thoughts from our brains trust? They've been trying to work out what makes a prank good. I love pranks. They're amazing. Most of the time, it's to get a laugh. And and it's really hard to know whether you should do a prank because you're not really sure whether they have had a bad day and they're just covering it up. And you don't really know Children's they programs they go back a long way on ABC Radio, as do Brains Trusts. Uh -huh, thank you, girls and boys. Now, here's our first subject. Do you think a teacher in the lower classes teaches better with or without a cane? Well, Mr. President, since you want to work me hard, I'll start off for Gallia 9, if you like. I certainly do like Teddy. Good. By the way, Gallia 9 is one of our youngest brain trusters. She's a 70. Well, that's jolly good, Gallia 9. Away you go. I think that teachers in lower classes teach better with a cane. Because if the teacher canes the children who are naughty, they won't act silly and will do their work well. The Argonauts was massive. When you joined the Argonauts Club, you were assigned a special name, like Galleon 9. The Argonauts ran for over 40 years, from the 1930s to the 1970s. I sat beside this wonderful wireless two feet high with a beautifully decorated front and with my ear to it and listened. I, Gran had had a stroke. She used to listen with me and I'd sit beside the wireless and listen to the arguments. Another long-running children's program was Kindergarten of the Air. It started on the ABC in Western Australia in 1942. During the Second World War, a fear of Japanese air raids meant kindergartens in Perth and Fremantle were closed. In 1943, Kindergarten of the Air went national and ran until 1985. Good morning, all you little girls. And good morning, all you little boys. And good morning, everybody else who is listening with us today. Who's feeling bright and happy this morning? Let me see your happy, smiling faces, then. Big smiles. Yes, I can see you have nice, white, shining teeth. Do you remember to brush them every morning when you get up? And every evening when you go to bed? That's the way to keep your teeth healthy and strong, isn't it? Body parts and body functions continue to be a staple of children's programming. In 2018, ABC Kids Listen began, an on-demand app and digital radio station. I wonder if you can guess what this sound is. Toilet. Toilet. Yep, that's right. It's a flushing toilet. Well, today on Imagine This, four-year-old Clancy has a question about the toilet. Where does my poo go? When I flush it down the toilet. Now this is a great question, Clancy. And it's a really important one. 
where do you think all the waste water in our house goes when we're finished with it? And it to the ocean. To the ocean. To the ocean. So how would it get from our toilet to the ocean? I don't know. To the pipe. To the pipe to, to go through the ocean. Other digital stations have been established too, like ABC Jazz, although Jazz has always had a place on ABC Radio. This is Lois Armstrong speaking. We're looking forward to coming into Brisbane Monday, which we're going to be swinging for the cats. So take it easy. Mobile. Hello again, this is Arch McCurdy inviting you to relax with me. Hi there, this is Monica Trafficker, and you are listening to The Dinner Set, here on ABC Jazz. One of my favourite New Orleans artists, the great Harry Connick Jr., is going to open the show tonight. But if you're a country music fan, you can also listen 24-7 on an ABC dedicated digital station for you. Saturday Night Country. Yep, strap yourselves in for a humdinger. I love a good humdinger. Or as my mate Champs would say, a rootin' tootin' bootin', scootin', electrocutin', ball burstin' country. <laughs> Night of entertainment. Goodness me, Becky Cole here with you. I'm still out on the road and coming to you from the bus under a South West Queensland sky. Then there's your digital station for pop, rock and blues. On Double J, you're with Miss Warhurst. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the brand new show. And there's Unearthed for new independent Australian music. I definitely think radio exposure is important. That's how a lot of bands begin to build their fan base. The Unearth Digital Radio Station is just a really great opportunity for young Australian artists to be heard. I think Unearth Digital Radio is a great idea because, like, only playing Unearth music, that's a great way that artists can feel assured that someone's going to hear their music because it's 24 hours. <laughs> that's a lot of music. <laughs> In 1932, the only way to listen was to gather around the old AM wireless. Now there's digital stations, live streaming, podcasts and apps. All sorts of ways now to listen to new and familiar voices. Grandstand Cricket on your radio, ABC Sport Digital and on the ABC Listen app. Round the wicket bowling towards Anderson and Anderson is bowled. It's all over. All out for 68. Australia have won. By an innings and 14 runs. And you could say that ABC Radio, in all its various forms over the years and across all its current platforms, still does fundamentally the same thing it was charged with doing back in 1932. According to the then Prime Minister, Joseph Lyons, this was to provide information and entertainment, culture and gaiety. At the 25th anniversary of the ABC... In 1957, the ABC chairman, Sir Richard Boyer, offered this reflection. How far we of the ABC have succeeded is not for us to say. In the last resort, we must be judged by our output. All I can say is that all of us in the ABC, commissioners and officers alike, have tried to put on the air the best characteristics of our people. And in this time, all the winds that blow, political, social and religious, have whistled around our heads in the ABC. We have sought to provide the raw material of life as it passes to the minds and consciousness of our people. For every single day of the past 90 years, ABC Radio has sought to provide you with information and entertainment, culture, and let's not forget the gaiety. This program represents just a tiny fraction of the stories and the people who've brought that to you. I'm Richard Feidler, 
You've been listening to Tuned In, a special program marking the birth of the ABC on the 1st of July, 1932.